Thank you very much, Raquel. And now um, we will have the presentation by Mary Jane. So if you could st start sharing your screen, that would be great. Here we go. <laughs> um, I'm Mary Jane uh, Monaghan from the University of Liverpool. And um, I was uh, the research assistant on um, the, the experimental Liverpool experiment. So I'm going to tell you a bit more about what we did. Um, firstly, we, uh, the aims of the experiment was to um, explore and discuss um, ethics and science education issues with various stakeholders. Uh, we chose ethics and science education as the two pillars from the um, RRNI framework to focus on as part of the experiment. We wanted to um, see how these, how these perceptions um, using the optical monitoring system as a case study um, for the research project. Um, we wanted to also identify other ethical issues and challenges that impinge on research. So we asked um, all the stakeholders involved to think about the optical monitoring system case study, but also draw on other experiences that I, they had of different research projects and innovation um, technology that they have been involved in. Um, we wanted to increase the awareness and perceptions of different people because um, when people work in isolation in SMEs or in the university, they often don't get the views, um, ethical views of other people involved in research projects. We wanted to also identify any um, weaknesses, barriers, um, communication issues with um, science education within research in institutions, industry and society. Um, this meaning um, how science is educated to um, different people, so how it's educated to society, different people within the university. Uh, we can often find that there are definitely communication issues with this when talking about scientific research within society. Um, it's often difficult, difficult to get across um, your research in the correct language. Um, we also explored the understanding and perceptions of science education with the stakeholders to see what they thought about um, educating society on scientific research and whether they thought it was beneficial. Um, and this was all within a hopes to identify issues that could lead to improvements in the way in which science education was delivered uh, by institutions and by SMEs within the community and the way in which researchers embed ethics um, into their research. So the optical monitor monitoring system case study um, that was chosen to use is a um, device that is fit, fitted into the uh, living quarters of um, people who are in receipt of social social housing care, um, often with health issues, very minor health issues that may just need a bit of assistance. The um, device monitors um, patterns of movement and behaviour and will alert um, people who are working with the individual that they may be moving around a bit less, maybe visiting the kitchen a bit less, and this can lead to health complications. Um, it was designed to help um, improve the amount of falls that are happening and to try and stop people being admitted to hospital. So when we conducted our focus group with the participants, um, as I said before, we asked them to focus on their own research, but also think about the optical monitoring system research and how that would be affected by the embedment of RRI and ethics and science education into that research study. Um, so we explained the research to them and we asked them to think about what barriers and challenges this would have um, in the dissemination of ethics and science education. So these were the list of stakeholders that we, um, we identified with. Um, the internal stakeholders as listed there, including um, PhD researchers right up to senior researchers and people who worked on the ethics committees and director of ethics um, and external researchers where we had um, six SMEs um, who were manufacturers and providers of health and social care solutions. So devices similar to the optical monitoring system that would go into people's homes and, and would assist people. Um, and we also have people working around those types of um, innovation. So the eHealth cluster, which is an organisation that helps put these um, devices into people's homes and um, NHS people and Liverpool City Council, the provider of social care. We uh, followed this methodology when we conducted the experiment. So we had initially we sent out um, via email or post an internal questionnaire. And the questionnaire was to um, 
gain a benchmark of, un of people's understanding of RRNI in ethics and science education. So what they already knew, if they knew anything, and what their perceptions of ethics and science education were at present. So we asked them for their awareness of ethics and science education, um, the awareness of um, and motivation to implement it within their current role and within their current settings, um, awareness of any policies that already existed and whether they engaged with other researchers, industry, society and policymakers when they were conducting research. Uh, we then moved on um, to a focus group where all the participants were invited to come along. Um, at the focus group, we introduced the uh, optical monitoring system research, told, told the participants about that, and then we asked them to um, discuss opinions and views on um, RRI ethics and science education. There was three activities that we conducted with the participants, and they worked in small groups, which were mixed groups of internal and external stakeholders. Um, we asked them to think about barriers against the diffusion of ethics and science education and come up with what, what was challenging and what was stopping people learning about ethics and science education. Um, then after discussing this, we asked them to come up with some policies and guidelines that might be helpful to use in institutions or um, organisations to better embed ethics and science education. Um, and we also asked them to come up with some solutions in how we could involve society more in research because this was one of the main barriers that came out of the initial questionnaire was that people were feeling that engaging with society was, was difficult. So we asked them to try and come up with some solutions. We then moved on to a one-to-one -one interview stage. Um, most of these were done face-to-face -face, as this was what the participants preferred with a few do being done over the telephone. Um, and I asked the participants six questions. They, all, they were all asked the same questions. Um, and we wanted to gain a better um, understanding of the reflection of how they could make changes. So after the focus group, we asked them to go away and reflect on what changes they could make within their role, where they worked at the moment and what they could do moving forward. So I asked them for a, about uh, collaboration opportunities and whether they ha thought that they would have any opportunity to collaborate with other people when they were doing research and innovation and what benefits they would get from this and what benefits the other person would get from this. We also asked them about what policies they would need to help embed ethics and science education more into research and innovation. And we also asked them uh, what they would like to see activity-wise and learning-wise from a um, up-and-coming workshop. That was our next step. We wanted to make sure that the stakeholders and participants um, would engage in the workshop and would be able to gain something from it as it was a learning opportunity. So we wanted them to set, set the challenges and the questions. So at the workshop, um, we invited the participants to come along to, as I said, the learning opportunity to further develop their understanding of RNI and um, ethics and science education. Uh, we did a brief outline again of what RNI was because it had been quite a while since the focus group. So we refreshed on what we were doing and what ethics meant within our RNI pillars and what science education meant within these pillars. And then we used Lego and Play Doh to. Um, make models of what ethics research means to the participant. So each person made their own model of a, a representation of ethics. Um, and they were then asked to discuss this on the table. They were asked to look at each other's models and note similarities and differences. And then moving on in the workshop with further discussion, we were asked to put all the models together and try to come up with co-creation of what would work for everybody. Again, the tables were all mixed, so it was internal and external participants. And sometimes that did prove difficult because what an internal stakeholder would need from an ethics model might be different to what an external one would need. So working together, it really helped them understand the needs of, of different organisations when you're developing ethics and science education. Uh, finally, I sent out again the um, questionnaire. It was a repeat of the first questionnaire, and this was to measure any um, development of understanding. Um, we asked the same questions again and uh, did an evaluation form for the workshop and the focus group. So a quick overview of the results um, from the first questionnaire. Um, it was used to identify, as I said, pot, uh, participants' perceptions, uh, their understanding of ethics and science education, and their motivation to 
implement ethics and science education and how much they engaged with the quadruple helix groups during the research. Um, at the focus group, we did a, an evaluation form afterwards and the feedback from this said, participants said that it was a good mix of pers perspectives of ethics and science education. Um, they particularly highlighted that they found it useful to talk about barriers and changes um, and they felt that they could go on then to use what they learned about uh, responsible research and innovation and open science within their current roles. Um, a lot of the participants also said that it gave them time to reflect on their own views of um, ethics and science education. Um, if you're working in an environment where you use ethics and science education a lot, it's not very often that you take a step back and reflect on how you're actually doing that and making sure that you are doing it responsibly and you are thinking about the end users and um, everyone's opinions are in there. So it was useful that, for them to be able to take a step back and think about ethics and science education in their current roles. Um, the interview summary, so I um, looked at all the interviews I conducted and it was um, highlighted the importance of knowledge exchange. So a lot of the participants were saying how important it was to be able to speak to different stakeholders during research and innovation, particularly people who were going to be benefiting from the research, benefiting from the innovation. Um, these, this was an important opinion to be able to gather and, and the knowledge exchange, being able to speak and take people's opinions and listen to their opinions and also give in your own. So it's a two-way street. Um, everyone helps everybody out. Um, the co-design of the monitoring system, it was something that was highlighted, making sure that it was done um, with the end user having input. Um, this way, um, it will be more, well, more well received by the end user. Um, it will be beneficial to them there'd be less changes need to be made it saves money because it would just do what it what it needs to do um this go this was also the case for a lot of the other technology designs that we talked about that the other smes were developing they also felt that involved and involving an end user at an early stage is definitely important because they're the person who's going to be using it and they're they're often the people who can tell you what they needed to do so it's it's better it's more well received and it saves time and money on research um, ethics needs to be communicated better to all stakeholders. It was highlighted in the interviews that sometimes, um, especially academic people, when they're going out into the community to, to speak to uh, members of society, they often aren't able to communicate ethics very well, um, probably because it's something that they're not used to communicating or especially with an RNI framework, it's not fully understood by them. So being able to communicate it well to other people is something that was that needs to be worked on. Um, and collaboration with the two-way relationship, um, it keeps society informed as what, to what research and innovation is happening. So it also helps other researchers. So if they know what is already going on and what research is already being conducted, then it means that they can help out if they've got an idea or that they're not going to do the same research at the same time. Um, so in the workshop, we also filled out an evaluation at the end of the workshop with all the participants and we took it, the feedback was that it was a very practical way to illustrate challenges. A lot of the um, participants were unsure about what to do with their Lego when they first got it, but what, more, the more they thought about it, the more, the more they realised what challenges they were actually facing on a personal level when it came to the embedment of ethics and science education. Um, they said they learned the different interpretations um, of science and uh, of ethics and science education between stakeholders. So, a few of the people who attended the workshop didn't weren't able to attend the focus group. So it was interesting for them to learn the different perceptions. Um, it gave participants plenty to think about moving forward, and they were all able to display how RRI and open science can be incorporated in future projects. As part of the evaluation, we asked them to say what they were going to do moving forward in terms of promoting RRI to colleagues and, and making sure it was included in future uh, research innovation projects that they were going to be involved in. So this is a comparison between the first and the final questionnaire. Um, the blue bars being the first questionnaire and the orange being the second questionnaire. Um, it shows that there was an improvement uh, across all questions that were measured on a five-point scale um, in terms of 
their um, understanding and perceptions of ethics and science education. Um, it shows that the most improved was question four, which was a question about the awareness of implementation of science education, and question six, which was the um, institutional science education policies. These showed a vast improvement between the first questionnaire and the second questionnaire. I also um, subcategorised the questionnaire into um, ethics understanding, ethics motivation, science education understanding, and science education motivation. Um, these were measured um, on a five point scale, given a maximum um, possible answer of 15 with three questions each. Um, again, you can see that there was an improvement across the cohort whole cohort from the first and the second questionnaire with science education understanding showing the most improved. And this is a comparison between the first and the second questionnaire on how the researchers said they would engage with uh, the quadruple helix groups. In the first questionnaire, um, most people were reluctant to, to engage or, or didn't already engage with um, anyone from the quadruple helix, but in the second questionnaire, they said they were much more likely to engage with particularly other researchers um, and policy makers when conducting research. So the summary of the overall findings um, shows the result that there was an improvement in attitude towards ethics and science education. Um, it also shows that, was, that there was an improvement in involving various stakeholders in all stages of research. We also asked the participants um, who they would contact with regards to implementation of ethics and science education within their um, employment or organisation or institute. Uh, this was me measured with a yes, no question and the results had no significant change from test one and test two with the participants still stating that they were unsure as to who to contact within their personal organisations or institution. The main challenges that we faced when conducting this research was um, gaining ethical approval took longer than uh, we, we anticipated in the early stages um, which meant which led to not being able to interact with um, our stakeholders as early as possible so not being able to build up those relationships um, with the with, with, if we were able to build up better relationships we would better understand how to motivate the stakeholders to engage with all aspects of the project we had some participants who who were only able to come to certain parts of, of um, our data collection and methodology and and th that was reflected probably in the fact that we weren't able to um, motivate them more into being able to come as we didn't have them relationships um, there is also a lack of awareness of ethics within our culture. Um, this project was advertised through the university website uh, with a call out for participants as well as through the eHealth cluster newsletter. Um, some, part, some, some people may have seen that it was about ethics and either thought it was unimportant or something that they already knew so they didn't feel a need to engage with the research. This may have contributed to the fact that we had a bit of a low uptake in participants. Um, if we would have had more participants, it would have proved better discussions and more opinions. Um, so improving on that would be to have more time to raise awareness of ethics. And um, we also didn't have any of the beneficiaries of the monitoring system. We're able to make the focus group or the workshop because of distance. Um, where, where we were holding these um, events was too far for these organisations to travel to. Um, they were going to be care organisations that were going to be installing the monitoring system into their uh, clients' homes. And it would have been really important to have them come to these types of discussions as they would be the people who would know what, what the end users needed. Um, so I went out and interviewed some care organisations on a time that suited them as they weren't able to make the focus group and workshop. Um, making it more accessible to them may have meant that they were able to attend, which would have proved um, invaluable. Um, so lessons learned, as I said, is raising, raising awareness before the start of the project, maybe having some um, initial um, workshops and presentations on what RNI was before we um, enlisted in participants, just to raise the awareness and hopefully get more participants to take part. And having an end user from the monitoring system, someone whose house the monitoring system was going to be installed in, would have definitely benefited research and innovators to better understand what would be needed from them. Um, this was a, a group that we didn't engage with and um, may have benefited the research. The next steps we've got planned are, um, we are developing at the moment a mandatory 
ethics and RNI training for postgraduate researchers. Um, this is to be trialled in the School of Electrical Engineering and Electronics and Computer Science and is going to be at the beginning of next semester. Um, this is in the hopes that this training will be rolled out across all disciplines across the university and will be completed by everyone before next September. Uh, we are currently working with the um, ethics department to, to get this training put together and get it rolled out. It, we also um, are showcasing the research at Love, a Love Data event in February. Um, this event is being held in Liverpool and it is in, conjunct, in con collaboration with the University of Liverpool and John Moores University. Um, so hopefully different, part, different people will attend that through John Moores University and we will then be able to showcase the research within that university as well as our own to get the words out there a bit more. Uh, we are in the middle of writing an academic paper on the research results, hopefully to be published very soon. Um, and we will be taking part in uh, more up and coming events to further disseminate through the university and any other channels that I can find. Um, thank you very much for listening. And I'm sorry about the technical delays at the beginning. Thank you very much, Mary Jane.